If you're working on something that is supposed to be more cartoony or in any way stylized, you might like the look of this guy on the left hand side here, that being the one with outlines compared to the one on the right hand side. I think in general this just gives a more striking feel to the whole model as it is. And you've probably looked into tutorials uh, on how to do that and you found a lot of post-processing related ones. And for the most part I actually do like that method. I myself have a tutorial on how to do this with post processing but there is some downsides to it mainly that being that it's not being calculated in the mesh space it's being calculated in screen space meaning that it just takes the screen after it's rendered and looks at okay i should be rendering a black outline pixel here despite how far away from it you might be and here you can see when I'm far away, you can barely really see the outline. You can still see a difference between the two, but it's not like there's a very thick, like one pixel thick outline around the entire thing. And conversely, when I go really, really close to this model, you can see that the outline is relatively thick because again, the outline is actually being drawn based on the mesh. So when the mesh is closer to the camera, the outline is the same relative size to the mesh as it is at any distance and with post processing that can be really really annoying to accomplish so this is where we get to how to do this with uh, a material on the mesh itself and the way we do that is with a overlay material so all your uh, static meshes and your skeletal meshes are going to have in their uh, mesh components here if we go down to rendering we then have this little thing here advanced and that'll allow you to put in a overlay material. And I have a material right here for lines that I'll show you in a second. And if we just apply that as an overlay material, bam, boom, we have our outlines. Just as easy as that. Now, in an empty project, we're going to reconstruct that stuff. If you want the project files for this with this material included, there will be a link down below in the description as always to the YouTube member link and the Patreon link for you to download it if you're a member or a Patreon. For now though, let's make this material. It's actually really easy to set up, so you probably don't even need to download it. It's just if you want to support me, right? So let's call this material a uh, line renderer or something like that. It's very badly misspelled. <laughs> And right away here, we're going to do a couple of things. First is going to be the blend mode. Uh, we will set that to being masked. We're going to mask out the original mesh shape. So we're only rendering the outlines. The shading mode, I'm going to set to unlit because I don't want light to influence this at all. I don't want it to like look shiny or reflective in any way. I just want it to be a solid color. And then we can set the emissive color here to whatever we want the color to actually be. We can make that like a blue color. Uh, I'm going to stick with it being black, but do know that you can easily make this any color you want. Then the opacity mask is going to be the thing that's going to be cutting out our mask. And that's actually remarkably easy to accomplish. Uh, first things first though, we should set this material to being two-sided so this should be checked to being true and that might seem counterintuitive because if you're familiar with the inverse hole method of creating outlines which is what we're doing right here uh, you're using the inverted model scaled up a little bit and if we're rendering on two sides uh, the inverted normals aren't gonna work right not quite because we have this node here two-sided sign and what this does is when you have a two-sided material, it just creates a black and white map where the white values are the usually invisible side. Usually when you have a material, the back faces get cold, they don't get rendered. Uh, this will, when you have a two-sided material, give you a black and white map of what is the original side and what is the back side. So if we simply just one minus that, we invert it, and if we put that into the opacity mask, now we effectively have just reversed the normals for this model which is the most important step to making this thing work in a reasonable way so if we go into uh, like a cube and we set this uh, back to default lit for a second you can see that we're looking inside the cube now we've effectively just flipped the normals you can also see it with the sphere but it's a little bit less obvious anyway we're going to stick with unlit as i said before and then from there, it's really as easy as getting your vertex normals in world space. We're going to multiply that by a amount. Uh, actually, I'm going to make this uh, a parameter, which will be 
outline distance. But default let's set it to like two. If we make any other like dynamic instances of this or any material instances, whatever, uh, we can set the material outline distance, uh, the thickness of the outline to different amounts. And that's going to go into the world position offset. So that will just scale up along the normals, all of the faces a little bit, kind of. And why am I saying kind of? Well, if we take a very low poly model, this is just a cube, right? And we add the overlay material to this, you will see that there's a little bit of tearing going on. Well, maybe if we add a little bit uh, more distance to this uh, at a low value, it isn't very obvious. But here we can start seeing uh, it's just creating a distance between the original and this, and the same here. And that is just because it is so low poly that offsetting its vertices, it isn't able to keep them connected. If we add in uh, the same thing to a slightly higher resolution cube here, this one has slightly rounded corners, uh, you will see that it's not really a problem anymore, right? Right now, this, under certain angles, you can still see there's a little bit of that going on, but for the most part, it is fine with higher poly models like this. And even then, this is not even particularly like high poly right? This is still pretty low poly. So if you go in and you have a decently high poly model, this is going to work like a charm. It's going to be absolutely great. Matter of fact, let's just show you that. I'm going to go into modeling mode and I'm going to add in a box here. And that box is also going to gain the line renderer uh, overlay. And you can see there's like gaps here and it's all kinds of ugly and it's just not great. <laughs> But if we then go in and subdivide this a little bit, and we can uh, subdivide this just in a, a linear way, add like five subdivisions or something like that, and we accept that, suddenly uh, that probably is kind of just gone. This is a very dense mesh now, way more dense than a cube has any right to be, obviously. Uh, but that shows you that even without really changing the shape of it, just adding the more geometry to it uh, kind of fixes most of that issue. Of course, it's still not perfect, but really no solution for making outlines in real time is going to be 100% perfect, all going to have some downside. And for something that is as easy to set up as this, I think that this is fine. Now, there's one more thing that I would like to do, and that is, this is going to be really tedious if every time you have to like go into a static mesh, you need to then set the outline material, and then you need to go over here, set the outline material, go over here, Set the outline material. It's really tedious, right? So what we can do is simply a blueprint class. We're going to make a new one. And we're going to make a, a static mesh component. And we'll call this outlined static mesh. This is just a static mesh component that we're now adding some of our own stuff to. And in here, we can simply add a new variable for the outline uh, material which of course we will set to a material object reference. If we compile that, we can give it a default value of our line material. And this is a little bit annoying, uh, but because components don't have a construction script, we can't add this to its construction script. Uh, you could make this into its own child actor component, but that I don't like doing that. And then on begin play, we're simply going to uh, set the overlay material for this static mesh. and. Uh, we can actually, straight up, without doing uh, this as a variable, set this to our uh, line renderer. Or we can uh, put in this material if we wanted to make it a little bit more variable. Now, this will only set this on begin play, meaning that it's not going to be showing this in the viewport, which is a little bit annoying, again, due to the lack of a construction script. I will show you a workaround for that in a second. Uh, and just to show the example, we're going to do this in the third person character real quick. If we add a outlined static mesh, we can give this a value of some mesh. I don't really care what it is. Let's do this sphere, whatever. Let's make it a little bit smaller though. It has the default value for the outline mesh, uh, but it doesn't appear to be rendering yet, which is a little bit too bad. But then when we actually play the game, you can see it does have the outline material. Because, of course, uh, it's getting applied to it on begin play. Again, it's a little bit annoying that it has to work that way, but it just kind of does. Now, an alternative way to go about doing this, which I sometimes do prefer, is to make a specific actor to do this. So this is uh, outlined static mesh. 
And what we'll do here is we will add our static mesh component, our outline static mesh component rather. And we can give this like a default value of a sphere as well. And now that we do have a construction script, we don't need to do this outline static mesh thing on begin play anymore. Instead, what we can do is we can get this outline static mesh and we can set overlay material to our outline material. And now it will actually do this in the viewport as well uh, for this actor. So we should be able to see that once we actually set this outline material to our line renderer. Now, it still doesn't show in this viewport, uh, but don't worry about that because if we now take our outline static mesh actor and we put it into the viewport here, you can see in the actual uh, game view, uh, we do immediately see the outline. So if you have like, a lot of art assets, like your trees or whatever, that need to have an outline, it is probably worth it to make an actor like this that just automatically applies that stuff. If you really don't want to bother with uh, doing it on begin play, like I was doing here, we can just, instead of doing outline static mesh here, we can do a child actor component, and that child actor component class can then be a which effectively gets you the same thing. It just is technically a different actor now. So it's slightly less performance, uh, but not noticeably so. And as you can see, that still works just fine. So those are some of the ways and some of the tips and tricks uh, around uh, the inverse hull thing that you can do to create easy and quick outlines to all of your assets. This works for both skeletal and static meshes, of course, I've been showing it off with like new extra component that we're creating. And I'll just delete this real quick because we're not using it anymore. That's all been uh, done on static meshes, but you can do the exact same thing. Uh, I'll just add it real quick uh, with like skeletal mesh component. There we have it. Outlined skeletal mesh. And we just copy the outline material uh, variable over real quick because I'm lazy like that. And we can just in our new custom skeletal mesh component, we can set overlay material as well to that. Hook it up to begin play. Again, we don't have a constructor here. It's a little bit more bothersome to do this as a child actor. You still can, but you're probably not going to be placing that many skeletal meshes that have to do uh, all that kind of stuff. So maybe you don't want to make a specific actor for this. Just a component is fine. You need to do a little bit of extra setup every time you want to use it or you just need to accept that it doesn't show within the viewport. Kind of depends on how much trouble that is all worth to you. <laughs> but now if we go into here, and instead of making this a normal skeletal mesh, which I actually can't change because that's set in C++. So I'll just make an example pawn real quick and add an outline skeletal mesh, uh, which will be our usual Quinn with the proper animation blueprint added in altogether. All that kind of stuff. Again, you don't see it right here in the viewport for the actor, but then if we actually put that in and we start the game, you will be able to see that we have the outline on this character. Now, the outline is <laughs> way too thick, and this is where we get into maybe making separate material instances with separate outline thicknesses. I'll leave that entirely up to you. Uh, for now, the way we can uh, change that is just setting this like back to one. And now you can see there is an outline around this guy, uh, but not my actual player character. So it does also work on skeletal meshes like that. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 